What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking? What's cracking? Thanks for stopping in. Here with our very first Muggsy Bogues episode. For all of you youngsters who don't know who Muggsy Bogues is, Muggsy is the smallest basketball player to ever play in the NBA, listed at five foot three. Muggsy was about mm, under 140 pounds, drafted in 1987, and I will always remember that because that was the year I was born. First round, 12th overall pick, selected by, at the time, the Washington Bullets. Obviously, at five foot three, Muggsy would be playing point guard. All right. Stayed with the Washington Bullets one season. Is notoriously known for his prime run, right, with the Charlotte Hornets that lasted roughly 10 years ish. Then went on to the Golden State Warriors and Toronto Raptors. Muggsy Bogues doesn't have any amazing accolades to his name, you know statistical honors, you know, never made an all-star game, never made an all-NBA team offensively or defensively, nothing like that. So over time, this man has been uh, forgotten. But those people that watched him play in the late 80s and uh, through the 90s know who the hell Muggsy Bogues was. The fact that this man was five foot three and could play with the best basketball players in the world. On top of that, drafted in the first round, just outside of the top 10 draftees, tells you how good this guy was. Literally, a tiny man among giants. If that doesn't tell you that this man could really play basketball, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, during his tenure with the Charlotte Hornets, he really impacted the team along with some other players, but they were a mediocre team for a while. And at one point, or uh, at, at actually for a duration of his stay with the Charlotte Hornets, they became somewhat of, uh, you know, pretty serious contenders. And three times Muggsy helped lead that team into the playoffs as a five foot three player. During the nineties, he was, very, very, very popular, uh, considering his size, but also the fact that the man could play basketball. And the Hornets rose in popularity as well. Uh, in the six seasons of 1989 to 1995, Muggsy finished in the top 10, top 10 in the NBA, in assists. And only one time did he finish worse than fourth place. Also, in the 92-93 season, Muggsy had the best assist-to-turnover ratio in the entire league. In the 1995 season, while he was still on the upward trend as a basketball player, performance-wise, uh, his knees got the best of him and he underwent arthroscopic surgery on his left knee. Uh, this pretty much set him set him back significantly, and he was never the same after that. And he struggled to even get on the floor and play, uh, only playing what six games. Following the the season, the ninety five ninety six season, where he played six games, the ninety six ninety seven season, Muggsy would go on to play sixty five games, followed by two games, fifty nine, thirty six, eighty and then three games, but his production, like I said, it was never the same. His production was minimal, um, and he wasn't even getting very many minutes, all things considered, or at least the amount of minutes he was used to, for sure. I would also like to point out that Muggsy Bogues, twice in his NBA career, twice, he averaged over 10 assists. But one of those years, the 93-94 season, where he also saw the most amount of minutes per game at 35.7, Muggsy averaged a double-double, over 10 points per game, over 10 assists per game, uh, and four re throwing the four rebounds. A five-foot-three guy averaging four rebounds. That's, that's incredible. 
10, 10, and four at five foot three. Listen, man. Muggsy had a lot of heart. Muggsy had a lot of energy. Muggsy came in, left it all out on the floor, had no back down in him. You know, when you think about it, every every defensive assignment, you know, Muggsy had, he was more or less, it was more or less a mismatch for him, just given the size. So honestly, it didn't even matter with him as far as getting switched off on different players because any situation is a mismatch size wise, but the dude didn't matter who he was guarding. He got up in their chest, he got up in their grits, and he gave his best defensive effort. And that's saying a lot compared to players in uh, today's league who have all the height, the athleticism, you know, the body, and they still can't get out there and put forth an effort like Muggsy would do. I'm not saying he was this world class defender, but given his size, you know, you, you gotta admire what the what the guy gave to the game of basketball and gave to the teams that he played for. Just saying. Anywho, I'm gonna shut the hell up. Let's get into this reaction. Going for a three point play. Scotty with 12. Here's Gill racing down the floor and to the hoop. Moxie Bogues corrals the loose ball. Kendall Gill again to the basket. Kendall Gill is a good player. He clears it to Bogues. Left hand crossover to the right. Buckets. Stacy King drops it into Purdue. Couldn't get it to go over Lechner. Lost the ball in a crowd. Bogues out with it. Off to the races. Muxy Bogues all the way to the hoop. Post. And Gannison couldn't get the turnaround to go. Ball on the floor. The two small guys down to chase for 22. The Bulls picking up where they left off last night against Sacramento. Del Curry launches the three. That's a big one. Finds Levingston in on Trapuca. A pass in a crowd knocked loose and stolen by Bogues. Del Curry finishing. Just against the dude's Curry. speed is incredible. Armstrong lost it to Bogues. It's a five-point game, folks. Muggsy Bogues scoring. Bogues up court to Johnny Newman. He spots up for three. Dead center with both of them. And the Bulls lead is 89-73. Good move. Oh, Muggsy. Oh, oh that, that little they thing there. The That's just what he needed. Remaining. Stacey King a half a second he needed to throw the defender Trapuca off. Trapuca pops free. And Trapuca has it. Muggsy Bogues cracks the whip as he pushes it down and lobs to Lechner. About to Lechner is you have to be so careful with the ball on the dribble against him. Look, look at that. Bogues. Look at that burst. Pitch out to Trapuca. Good pass. Hey, bucket. 7.45 for the game. The Bulls maintaining a 16-point lead. Kendall Gill's hot here in the... Bogues guarded by Armstrong and the shot clock is at 15. Jeminski from the top. Morris Grant missing out of the post. J.R. Reed the rebound and Bogues on the push. Chapman for three. But Rex Chapman. Another sellout crowd in the stadium enjoying themselves to this point. Very early on. Bulls have extended Good the move. defense. Bogues beats it and Reed fires out of the left corner. He can get back out that time. He got himself under and Phil said nice move. Two points on the board. Robert Reed fires right at the... The Bulls back up by one. Chapman in the right corner. They've got some distance on the team with Chapman and Reed. Bogues on the drive, runs into Cartwright. Take and the contact. The Stayed in the Here's air. Him against mm. Purdue. Eight to shoot. Bogues shoots Pull the long up. one. Oh, and J.R. Reed has it as the Hornets come back looking for the lead. Bogues dances down the lane. So there were opportunities for Devout to dominate, and he has not taken advantage. Muggsy Bogues hits right. Is that Glenn ball. Rice? Jordan That's my boy. Glenn Rice can shoot. Comes Vladi Devout. Triple team. He'll pick up the rebound, however. Hornets with all kinds of options on the perimeter, and Muggsy Bogues becomes one. A three-point threat he's become. That's his 17th. 16-11. Bulls in the lead. Here's Rice. First time for Chicago. Bulls lead it here by five. Bulls inside. Rice escaped Pippen. Pass by Rodman. Hornets now trying to get the break 
to work. Ebosh recovered. And Curry for three. Round now. This is a personal battle. Bryce now. Back to Mason. Dale Curry. Watched Bryce caught on fire. Here, here's Bogues from the top. Big basket from Muggsy Bogues. It looked longly to get that left arm up in the air. A little bit of a flop job, but it worked. Look at the battle between Rice and Jordan. Mason down low. Kirstich's right with the pass. Has to follow Muggsy on the cut through. Here comes Mace. The kick to Bogues from the corner for two. Set and shot, Muggsy baby. Bogues. At that time, handle it nicely. They're looking for Leroy McDonald to give us a call and our BF player soon stakes. Sponsored by Budweiser. Inside it goes to Rice. Rice with the shot. Count the basket plus the foul. In seven attempts. 60-55 Chicago. Yeah, normally a, a guy who's struggling is going to look to put it down, but Scotty Pippen, the ultimate confidence stoppable moves in the history of the league, the Jordan fall away jump shot. Here's Muggsy Bones along the perimeter for three. Glenn. Listen, Glenn Rice was great at setting his feet, just being ready for the pass to shoot, man. I'm telling you. As a Laker fan, I know. At the helm. Jordan to watch him. Curry off a screen. Anthony buckets, big shot, clutch. One hundred, one hundred. Sunday in Boston, and the Hornets get a steal right off the break with Kendall Gill. A great tap by Kendall Gill to give it to Muggsy, and Muggsy says, "Let me give it back to the guy that created the turnover." And Kendall, one of the top five picks, including Mr. O'Neal, third steal of the game for the Hornets. Muggsy will get a bucket. That's an outstanding play again. Make it work. Johnson with the rebound. Bogues Good pass. Brown and Gaddison both touched it on the end line. Muggsy Bowes can really give the ball to people. Look at that behind the back pass to Larry Johnson. You have to be happy if you're a big guy. Line for 40 of Charlotte's 55 points. Bogues. Ooh. Gets into no man's land and gets the tip. There you go. Not giving up on the play. Good job, little man. Run the play. Run the play. What? Muggsy. Staying in the Hornets. Cloud trying to unpour their team back into it as well. Double coming. And step into it. Shoot. Need under double digits. And Charlotte's got to come down and get a good offensive play call. Don't need to have to rush it. You got to get the ball and get a good shot now. 95-87. Charlotte's lead is shrunk to six to eight. Back up to ten. Or to get Muggsy Bogues out of the play. Let's see if New York will do that again tonight. Either that or they sub early with Anthony Mason. Here's the problem. And Doc off the glass. The men of Teal have it. Bogues. What is this? This is the men of Teal versus the men of Steel. Doug with 11 first half points. And Larry Johnson on the season has only blocked 27 shots. So when he lets a guy get down there, you're not going to worry about him getting shot. 46 without a field goal in game number two. Johnson to Bowes. Did a good rotation. Ooh, look at that defense. curl around. Nice look to Morning. It goes. Hmm. That the curl right there. He's going to the basket, and Doc Rivers made a mistake. He ran out. Now someone's going to have to make a shot. Gill now swinging the ball. He's missed his last three perimeter jumpers. See if he can dish it off this time. There's Muggsy going to take it. And he gets it. That baseline jump shot. Because Starks is going to release. Oh, from 18. And he... Charlotte's got it. Notice the repetition, the routine. Every time he catches that ball, it's the same set movement. Catch, step into it, release. Pushes it across. Finds an opening. It goes! And Breaker. Johnson stalling with the ball. Oh, shoot it. Buries it. Can Ewing play this period without fouling out? I mean, he has played the last right. three minutes. And a steal. Charlotte and takes it short. Bowen takes it away from Starks. A lot of jump shots will be flat now as the legs start to go. Throws it right into the hands of Davis, stolen by Muggsy Bowe. I love, I love that, man. And, you know, 
He's dangerous in the fast break. He's so short, it's going to be hard to steal a ball from the guy. Muggsy could literally run between a player's legs if they're tall enough. <laughs> and uh, he makes the right passes. And then even in the half-court sets, I see him running the plays, being patient, waiting for the screener to come, waiting for the player to come around the curl, puts the ball right in their hand. And that's saying a lot, man. Given the man's height, he's five foot three. A lot of times he's passing, he's trying to give chest passes to people. Um... So, it's uh, it's it, it's a the amount of distance he has to cover at his size, how much energy he has to expend at his size to cover the distance, all that stuff. It's it's absolutely miraculous. I hope people understand that that what we're seeing a guy five foot three playing basketball at a pro level and and succeeding and excelling at it. Not to mention average double-double two seasons as an integral part of the basketball club. It was five foot three. I, I was five foot three in probably, I don't know, third or fourth grade. I think I was five five in fifth grade. May, and I'm five seven now. And I couldn't get out on a basketball court with, with six foot players. This guy was was my it was the size of me. Before fifth grade, third or fourth grade had to be. I was five foot three. <laughs> Just put that into perspective, man. The dude's strength is his entire strength from top to bottom, especially his core had to be strong as hell at that size to be playing basketball. Let's keep it 100, man. Man, incredible. Anyway, that's all I got to say about it. Uh, shout out to Muggsy Bogues. Uh, great, 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 great little man, especially all things considered. Played a nice lengthy career in the NBA, and it's a shame that he's one of those guys where the the the, the injuries took him out. Y'all let me know what you think about it. Did you see Muggsy play? What did you think about him? Add any context that you would like to about Muggsy Bogues, please. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.